So welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is working with patterns on Studio One. Now everything on this guide is in chapters. So if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. Now if you like this guide, like and subscribe and if you have the money, you can buy me a coffee. Everything is on the description. Right, so let's just begin. I'm going to be working with an Impact XT. I'm going to be working with this and I'm going to go and select a kit and maybe the first one just because, you know, it's the first one. And then of course we can just play some sounds. So I'm going to be closing this and the, and the most important part is to create a pattern. So right here, when we are in the track, we can double click and this will just create a clip for us. Now, if I double click, this will bring the edit view we have right here at the, at the bottom. We can just make it bigger to drag it, you know, right up. So this is not the view that we want. This is not a pattern. It's just a drum view from a clip. So what we need to do when we work with patterns is to create a pattern clip. So to create a pattern and not a, just a MIDI clip, we need to put the cursor where we want to create it. And then we need to do control shift and the letter P. So I'm going to go right there, control, then shift and the letter P. And this will create a clip with a pattern. And notice that right now the view is completely different. Now, still, what if you created a mid clip and you want to convert this to a pattern? What we can do, we can right click on this part and then go to the instrument parts. And right there you have convert part to pattern. So I'm going to be just, you know, just clicking and there you go. It's just converted the MIDI to a pattern. So we need to learn how to navigate this. If you go all the way down, you're not going to be able to see it. You can go all the way up or you can even separate this view and have it in a different one or maybe a different screen and then just, you know, resize it or even go big and just go and do it full size. Now, in this case, I'm just going to go and attach it and make it a little bit smaller. So if I go right here and I scroll down, I'm going to go, go down. And if I scroll up, I'm going to be going down. That's actually pretty obvious. Now, what you might not know is that when you have a view, something, you know, big, or maybe you have a lot of steps, like, I don't know, 64 or something like that, something crazy. So hold shift. And now you're going to be scrolling horizontally and not vertically. That's, you know, the main difference. Also, the lanes sometimes are too small or maybe they're going to be too big. So what you can do in this case with control, not shift, you can uh, zoom or make them bigger or you can make them smaller as well. So the timeline right here, all the different steps that we have and we have 64, which is a lot, are a little bit too big. So maybe we want to resize this uh, just, you know, just to make it better. So in this case, you will need to do control shift and then with the scroll, you're going to be just making it, uh, you know, bigger or smaller. Now, all of this that we are doing right now, you have the controls at the bottom. First, I'm going to go to 16 because maybe 64 is a little bit too much. But right here at the bottom, I'm going to go make it like that. Right here at the bottom, you do have this con these controls available. So you can go right there and just make it bigger or you can make it, make it smaller from here. And the same thing with the, with the time zoom. Now, if you go there, it's going to make it smaller or it's just going to make it bigger. I'm going to be kind of a putting it right here so we can see uh, the 16 steps. All right, so let's do what we came here to do, which is creating a pattern. So add uh, by clicking, well, you know, you're going to go to the steps. In this case, this is the bass drum. I'm going to go right there and I'm going to be putting four on the floor. Pre pretty simple and not there, there. And you just add steps by clicking on that particular step on this particular lane. Now, if we want to, uh, I'm going to be adding this and I'm going to be adding this. And I don't know, maybe I'm going to be adding a clap right here. Not that one, this one. All right, so that's it. That's, you know, super easy. Now, if you want to remove it when you hover on a step that you have something, you're just going to be removing it. That simple. So I'm going to be looping the clip and then I'm going to do play and we have something super simple, right? Super simple. So I'm going to be stopping this and I'm pretty sure you know all of this. So we need to talk about the inspector and we need to talk about the options that we have right here. And I want to cover first, start with the steps and the resolution. So of course, like we already did, now we have 16 steps, but we can go to 24, we can go to 32 and so on and so on and so on. So in this case, we can go lower. Right now we have a 16 steps. So what we can do now, uh, we can just make it less steps. Now, when you do so, you're going to be kind of a chopping or disposing the steps or the data that you had after the eighth step. Now, this doesn't mean that it's going to delete it, right? It's just kind of a not playing it. Now, when you do so, uh, when you make it smaller, in this case, let's say that this is going to be my clip. If I play it, it's going to be just a kick and just a snare. 
All right, so it's a pretty simple thing. Now, this is eight steps, so it's half of the duration of, the, of this bar. Well, that's the thing. Now, in this case, when you double down steps or you go up in steps, it's going to still play whatever you have right here. It's going to keep repeating the pattern. Even though this is going to, this is shorter than this clip. If I go right here and just keep standing this, it's just going to duplicate and keep looping and playing the same part. Right? So if, if you want to do a, kind of a, a four on the floor, you just don't need a lot of steps. Right, you just can do eight and do something simple. So I'm gonna go back to the 16s, and the resolution is a different thing. Since now we have 16 steps, we have in one bar 16 steps, so we have pretty much the same thing. So we have no issue, right? So the resolution is a little bit different from the other one. If I kind of offset or change the resolution, is this clip is going to uh, be a little bit different. I'm going to be changing it to 32s, to 132s. And now right here, we don't see any change. It's like everything is just kind of a, the same. But if I go right here to 116, notice that this part is changing. Now, since you have less steps than the actual resolution, this same thing is just going to be played, but it's going to be just faster. Just going to play just faster tempo. And we are not actually playing faster tempo. The thing is that we are adding, we have, uh, you know, more things playing on less steps. Now, if I want to kind of uh, redo this, to fit what we had from before, I will have to delete it like this because now we have more steps in between, right? We are just going up in resolution. And I'm gonna go to the snare. And now we have pretty much the same that we have from before. Maybe not that, but we have pretty much the same. Now this is gonna keep going and going. If you go up in resolution, we have the same issue. But it's not an issue, it's just the way it works. All right, so I'm gonna go back to 116s. Now, if I play this, it's going to sound, it's going to sound, you know, a lot slower. Now, if I want to go back to my four on the floor, I'm going to need to kind of fix this. But I want to play more things in between because maybe I want more steps and I want to do, you know, a lot more. So we have the same problem. If I change it to 132s, this is going to go faster and I'm going to need to kind of uh, change how this works. But now we have a lot of things right here that we can play. We have more steps. Right? If I change this to the other one, it's just not going to be the same. So you always need to bear in mind of the resolution and the steps that you have available or the steps that you're working with. So there's a little bit more to steps and resolution because on each lane, we can offset the steps and the resolution from the other different lanes. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. So first, I want to cover some other things like this swing right here. If I do some tambourines and I just, you know, go and play them, you're going to be getting something like that. Now, in this case, since uh, the tambourine is 16s, we are kind of a, we, we are playing pretty much everything. The swing is going to affect this one in this case. So if I go up in the swing, we're going to, of course, get that swing kind of a sound. Now, when we do this, we don't see right here the change. But if we go right here at the top, we can see that this MIDI is changing. If I go all the way down, we can see the change right there on the swing. Fine. So that's the swing, just a very, you know, very simple thing. So right here, you can audition the notes, and this is pretty similar to what we have on, on, on the MIDI piano roll. I don't want to talk about this because it's very it's pretty simple. I want to talk about the variations. Now, the variations is something super cool. Now, what we can do, we can create different variations of different ideas and host it within the same pattern and using the same instrument. So whenever we create different variations, then we can just layer different variations and pretty much layer the whole arrangement. So let's say that I want to create a four in the floor. So this is what I have on right here on this pattern. All right, so we have that, which is pretty simple. Now, what I want to do, I want to do, uh, I want to create a different variation of this. So when you go right there, you can uh, do the plus, and this is going to take you to a blank pattern, which is hosted within the same pattern. So what you can do right now, you can just do the same than before, because I want to create a variation. I'm going to do the, uh, the four in the floor, but I'm going to be doing a snare. So now if I play it, this is going to be, you know, the, the actual clip. Now we can toggle or you can switch between clips and instantly it's just going to go and just play it. It doesn't matter what, what we have right there. Right. 
So what if I want to do something else based on the whatever information I have right here? So the next one is going to be duplicate. When you cl click on this, it's going to duplicate the variation one in this case. And it's just going to create a variation two with the same information. So right here, we just can do, I don't know, something else like, uh, you know, a tambourine or something like that. So now we have uh, like three different variations. So we have the first one, we have the second one, and we have the third one. Now, what if you create a variation, let's say make a copy or a duplicate of this of the number two, and then later I just do some funky things and I decide that I don't want this, you can right there, just remove it and kaboom, it's not there anymore. Now, one of the uh, most important things that we can do right here is rename the different variations. And this is something very important. So in this case, right there at the top, we have the information of the variation that you have selected and what you're actually using. In this case, since this track is called Impact, you can still go here and say this is going to be drums. And it's just going to say, dude, this pattern belongs to the drums and then whatever it is that you're doing right here. And this is the name of the variation. So we can still go right there and change the name of the variation. So if you can double click it, I'm gonna be called this an intro and the second variation is gonna be uh, the verse. So I can go right there, select everything. Could have made a mistake, made a mistake right there. Uh, I'm gonna do verse and I don't know, this one is gonna be a course, kind of a make sense. You can go right here and you can double click right there and just change it to whatever it is that you want to do. So this one is going to be a course. I'm going to be, uh, um, you know, pressing enter. And then you have the three different uh, variations with three different purposes, you know, the intro, the verse and the course. Now, why is renaming, uh, renaming this so important? Now, what we can do if we go to our track, and for now, I'm just going to close the browse. What we can do to our track, we can just make a duplicate of the different variations and right there at the top, and I'm going to make it bigger, uh, right there at the top, it says that this is the course, this is the course, and the other one is the course. But maybe what we want to do is we want to do an intro, a verse, and then a course, right? Pretty simple. So right there at the bottom, when you click on this icon, it's going to tell you, okay, so which variation you want to use? Well, this one is going to be the intro, this one is going to be the verse, and we can see that it's changing. And then the other one is going to be the course. So we are, we are cool on that one. So if I play this, this is just going to be playing the different variations. And it's a great feature because you can just create your whole track just from different variations and then just, you know, do the arrangement, which is, you know, something very awesome. So going to be going back. I don't want this and I don't want this. I'm just going to keep this one for now. All right. So let's talk about the different thing since we know how to use this and we are going to be going right here and finish with this part. We need to talk about the gate and we need to talk about the accent. Now I'm going to create a new variation. Now then that we know how it works, uh, we want to talk about the gate. Now the gate will uh, play the steps and it. it's going to make it make them shorter. Just like, you know, step sequencer, you can go, go all the way up in the gate, make them longer, or you just can make, sh make it shorter. Now, it depends on what you're doing, uh, in this case, by default, the default value is going to be 100%. Uh, depends on what, you're, on what you're using, this is going to work or it's just, you know, not going to do anything. So I'm going to be going to a sound, I'm not sure which one, I'm going to be going to the hi-hat maybe. Yeah, I'm going to go to this one, the hi-hat. Let me just find it. This one, and I'm going to go a little bit down in volume. And what I will do, I will just going to do something like this. Now, if I play this, it's going to be like that. Now, if I go down in the gate all the way down to zero, this should be super short or maybe it wouldn't, shouldn't be playing at all. If I play it, it's the same thing. If I go to the 200s, it's the same thing. Now, depends on what you're doing right here, you need to go to your instrument and adjust what this is. So this is the hi-hat and right now it's on one shot. So one shot is going to, when I play it and I don't need to hold it, as soon as I play it, it's going to play the whole clip. It doesn't care if I'm holding it or I'm just, you know, doing anything. So if, if you go to normal, now this one is going to work a little bit different. Now I need to hold. Uh, the hi-hat and this is gonna decide the amount of, uh, you know, the duration of, you know, the note in this case, in this case, the hi-hat. So if I press and hold, it's gonna play pretty much everything. But if I just kind of tap it, it's just very short. So now the gate 
is going to be able to control how this one sounds. Now, since we are on the 200s, it's going to be super long, but I'm going to be going to zero or maybe just, you know, something super short. And we now we are going to be noticing the difference. So I'm going to be going like that. And now we can hear the difference, right? As soon as I go up in the gate, the steps are going to be kind of a longer. And it's kind of a super loud, right? So let me just go here on the hi-hat and I'm going to go down in the amp. So if I go up in the gate, of course, it's just going to be longer and then longer and longer. Now, this depends again on what you're using. If I go all the way to 200, not much is going to happen. But maybe we could, you know, work with a synthesizer instead of, a, of an impact or maybe a sound that it's kind of a really, really large. In this case, the hi-hat, it's a very short sound. So the gate going to 200 uh, will have an, effe uh, an effect. In this case, if we go to 100, uh, it's kind of a, the default value. So yeah, we can use the gate, something very kind of a standard on any kind of a sequencer or step sequencer. Now, then we have the accent and this one is really cool. Now, the difference or the thing is that if I play it, nothing is going to happen again. If I go up on the accent, nothing happens and we can only go to 80%. If I go to zero or, or maybe no accent or just, you know, the lowest value, which is five, nothing is going to happen. And it's because you need to decide which sound is going to have an accent. And when you do control right now, we have the kind of a, the erase that step. I'm going to be playing the uh, pressing the control and it's going to change uh, to kind of a magic wand. You know, I believe that's the icon. I don't know, maybe that's the icon. And when I click it, that's now it's going to receive the information how much this should be accentuated. If I go to this one, the uh, we are going to be able to notice it. So if I play this again, since the accent is 5%, you're not going to be able to notice this. If I go up, now we can. Now to remove the accent is the same thing. You just hold the control, you click it again, and accent is no more. And you can just go really crazy right here. Or do whatever you want, right? All right, so that's going to be the accent. All right, so I'm going to jump this section. We're going to talk about this later. And I'm going to go to the auto fill. Now, for now, I'm just going to delete all of this. Now, everything that we are doing right now, we are just entering the notes ourselves. Now, this is kind of a shortcut, uh, so you don't have to do everything. So if I go to the bass drum and go right here to the first one, this one sets uh, says set every four step. So if I do this, it's just going to do it for us. Every four step is going to go and do it. How, you know, cool. Now if I go and remove it, uh, we actually don't need to remove it. But if I go with this the, to the next one, it's going to be every second step. So this is a little bit different, right? It's just going to show like, the, you know, look like that. And if I go to this one, it's going to be the whole row the whole lane now on the other one it's just going to be clear the whole lane and the other one is going to be shift now on this one we kind of need a very specific example so for the bass drum i want to four in the floor so super simple i'm going to be going there and just doing play and we have what we wanted right pretty simple you just don't need to do anything you just one click now if i go to the maybe i don't know the clap or something like that i can maybe do something like that, or maybe something, something like that. Let, I'm going to do it like that. Might it maybe sounds cool, but I would love to move this around and see how it sounds. So this is what, what this option it's all about. It says shift lane. So if you have this lane selected, when you click it, it's going to shift whatever you have right there. And for us, in this case, it's just cool. So we can, you know, move things around and just find different variations. And I kind of like that. Now, if you keep going, it's just going to keep shifting and shifting. And when you reach the end, it's going to go back to the beginning. Right? And so on and so on and so on. So I kind of like this one. Right. So that's what the shift lane means. Now, there's a different thing that I need to show you. So if I go to this one, for now, I'm just going to go and delete it. If I go to this one and right click, you have some of these options right here, pretty much all the options. You have the clear lane, copy lane. We're going to be maybe talking about that later, but you have the fill lane. And this one is the same that we have right here. So you have these options when you do a right click, set every second step. We know that one set every fourth. We have that one. We know that one. 
and then the shift lane that we've been using right here. Now, this is cool because, you know, we have it right there, but, you know, it's just a lot easier to have the options right there and we don't have to right click. But you do have other options. And uh, for example, you have the double lane resolution. So for now, I'm just going to maybe do the same thing we've been doing, you know, we did before. And this one, what it will do, it will double the lane resolution. And this is kind of the topic of the next chapter. But if I click on this one, it's going to double the lane resolution. So now this lane has a different resolution than the other ones. So when we play it, it's going to, it's going to sound a little bit different. Especially when we start adding more notes, because now we have more steps on this one. And we can, you know, get complex sounds or get just, you know, create complex rhythms. That's the whole plan. Now, since we are doubling uh, the lane resolution, we can just go down and go back to what we had from before. Now, since we have some notes right here that are, you know, a little bit different, when we go down resolution, some of them are just going to be kind of emerged. So if I go down now, of course, it's affecting what we had from before. And if I go up double lane resolution, we just never get it back. So you need to be careful when you do this. Right. But you can go up in resolution and you can go down in resolution as much as you wish and just get crazy with, you know, with a lot of things. Right. So I believe you got the idea. Now, right here, when we click it, we have other options like copy and clear pattern and then half resolution. But this is talking about the pattern is not talking about the lane. So you need to be careful when you select this. Now, for now, I'm just going to go back to what we have from before. We can do it from here. We're going to talk about it in, in a minute, but I'm going to be going down and yes, 132s. No, I want to go to 116s. And if I go down, we have 116. So we have the same thing than the other lanes. All right, so before we talk about all of this in detail, I want to show you one more thing. Whenever we add a step, what you can do, you can make this step longer. Now, this belongs to the three, but we can hold shift. And when I hold shift, I can extend the note as much as I want. Now, this is useful, depends on the sound. Since we have a clap, it's just, you know, not going to do anything. It's just going to play it once on the three and nothing is going to happen on the four. Right now, but you, if you have a sound that uh, maybe is uh, kind of a super long, what you're doing essentially, it's uh, tying notes. It's like a tie, but you can do it, you know. So let's go deeper on this one, on the lane step and resolution, because this is a big one. It's a great tool for experimentation. So maybe you notice, maybe you didn't, when we uh, doubled or have we uh, split the uh, the resolution uh, right here, when we actually do it, I'm going to go and do it right now. It's just telling us what we are doing right there. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to do it from here. You just can go right there and select whatever it is that, you know, you want to do. Let me just delete this. I can go right here, do triplets. We can do dotted notes. We can do quintuplets or septuplets. So, and this is going to alter whatever it is that you're doing. So maybe I want something like this. And again, this is just going to be just giving you different variations because now you have a something else going on right here. And one thing that you need to notice since you're changing this and for now, I'm just going to go to, I don't know, 164 and maybe that's too much. I'm going to go to 132s, right? So I know that 132s is not going to be long enough to finish the whole thing because we don't have enough steps. So when the whole loop finishes right here is this going to restart and go back to the beginning so it's not you know kind of a not playing it right here so you need to bear this in mind especially when you offset or you change the timings now it depends on what you want to do this can give you very cool effects you know very cool variations and you know maybe something like that which is going to be longer in this case but you need to do a lot of, you know, you can do a lot of experimentation with this and get really, really cool sounds. On top of that, let me go to 132s. What you can do, you can offset the amount of steps. And this will kind of, again, offset the duration. Right now, we are just kind of playing this twice. It's like copying this here and just pasting it right there. But if I do less steps, something like that, it's just going to offset the timings and it's just going to, you know, give you a different variation. 
And this is again great for experimentations because maybe it can take you to places that you did maybe didn't even know that existed. That's the whole plan. So in this case, I'm just gonna go back to 16 to whatever we have from before, because we because we need to move forward. Okay. Alright, for now I'm just gonna delete all of this and I'm gonna do my snare and my snare, and we are gonna go conventional. Okay, something conventional. Cool. Now we need to talk about the lane options and edits that we have right here. And the first thing is going to be the mute and step in and solo. And I'm pretty sure that you already knew all this because it's pretty obvious. You can mute them or you can solo them, right? Pretty simple. Now on each lane, you have information uh, of where this belongs, the pitch where it's playing. And this, uh, you know, belongs to right here, the pads, or if you're using an instrument, this is going to be that the note that it's playing on each step and what we are doing. In this case, since we have an impact, it's just, you know, it's telling us right there. Now, there is something else to it. If I go right here and I click it and hold it, it's telling me move. So I can move this and I can do different things. Now, for now, I'm going to go to the clap right there. And I'm going to do something, I don't know, something like that. Doesn't matter. And I'm going to go to the clap and attempt to move it to the snare drum. Now it says move clap to snare drum. So we have several options right here. If I do this without touching my keyboard, right? I'm just going to kind of a drag and drop right there. It's going to move the clap to the snare. So whatever we have on the clap is going to be replacing whatever we have on the snare, which is fine, but maybe sometimes you just don't want to do this. Now you have other options and all everything revolves around the shift, the control and the alt. And if I do the same thing, I'm going to go to the clap, I'm going to kind of a click it, I'm going to hold it and now I'm going to do shift. Now when I do it, it's going to say, instead of move, it's going to be exchange. If I do this exchange clap and snare drum, uh, and if I do this, now whatever we had on the snare drum is going to be, you know, playing on the clap and whatever we had on the clap is going to go to the snare. Let me just go back. And now what if we do instead of, uh, if instead of shift, we do control. So I'm going to do this instead of move. Now it's going to be copy, right? So shift is going to be exchange. Nothing is going to be move and control is going to be copy. So this one will just copy whatever we have on this lane to the next, you know, to the other lane. And it's of course erasing whatever information we have right here and replacing it, uh, replacing it with this one. All right, so let me just go back. So you have, you know, different options right here. Now we can do a little bit more if we go all the way up. We have the view for the drum mode, which is this mode, this one, and the other mode is gonna be the melodic mode. Now we can still, you know, do the same thing with the piano roll, but we're going to be talking about that in a minute. For now, I want to cover what we have right here. Now, if you have several instances, you can switch them right there. But in this case, if you go right here, it says pitch names. Now, whenever I click this, it's going to give us different options of, you know, what we can do. Now, the first one is hide unused. So if I click this, it's just going to hide whatever, you know, uh, whatever we are not using. Pretty simple. So if you're just working with this, why having the other ones? So you just can, you know, remove them. But it's not deleting, it's just hiding. So if I go back to show default, it's going to show the default, whatever we had from before. Now, since we are using impact, this is kind of a recognizing by default that we have an impact and it's kind of a reading all the different pads and banks that have a sound loaded. And in the case of impact, we have some other banks where we have nothing. Now, of course, uh, it's recognizing this. It's just not giving us, you know, the option right there. It's just not showing the other banks and the other notes and the other pads. Now, we can. If we go to show all, it's just going to do that. It's showing us the one we have available, but then it's going to be showing uh, the ones that have nothing. So we have, you know, the option to watch them or just, you know, getting getting them right there. Always, you can, if you want, you can go back to show default and it will always take you to default. Now, why this show default? It's very important for us. And it's because you can go to edit mode and you can just make some changes and just tailor this to whatever the F you want. So the first one, this one is going to be the move and the other one is going to be the height. So let's just kind of say that I don't like having the bass drum on the second place. I just don't like it. So I can go right here, select it, and this is going to be the move to where. So I'm going to be moving this to the first position, maybe the snare, makes sense that it's the, it's the second one and the clap maybe the third one. So now we have a different order, right? So we can do this. 
Now, then you have a dot right there. So this means it's going to hide the channel. Pretty much what, what we have on when we create channels, uh, we can hide them and show them. Well, this is the same thing. Let's, uh, let's pretend that I don't like the flutes, right? Uh, maybe I don't like them. I don't want them right here. I'm not going to use them, but I want the other ones. If you go to this option and we do the hide unused, it's just going to delete or just hide everything that we are not using. But maybe I just want the other ones right there, but I just don't want the flutes. So I can just go there, go there, go there, and this they are not going to be uh, visible anymore. Now, the problem is that we are still getting them. And this is because this is light up, you know, it's not grayed out. It's weird because we are on edit mode. Once you click it and you make your changes, of course, and you click it, you're going to get out of the edit mode and it's going to remember the changes. If I go at the bottom, we don't have the flutes, which is a good thing in this case. It's just remember, remembering the changes and doing what, what we want. Now, what if I want to go back to default? That's why we get the show default. Whenever I do this, it's just going to show the defaults, you know, the one we, uh, we the, the ones are hidden. And if we have the other option now, since we have a different order, it's going to be resetting the order. So right now we are working with impact, which is a drum machine, but we could use this with the piano roll and uh, use melodic mode. Now we can still do, do this, you know, right here on the piano roll, but it kind of makes sense that if you're working with drums or in, the, in this case, uh, you know, this uh, drum machine, we work on this one. But maybe if you have a different instrument, let me just bring an instrument. I'm going to bring the Juno because I'm that kind of a guy. I like the Juno. And this is just a Juno uh, simulation from Cherry Audio. So we are going to be getting something like that. I'm going to close it and remember that we want to create a pattern. We double click, it's going to create the pattern, but this is not what we want. I'm going to right click and then convert, uh, convert part to pattern. This is just going to do the trick. Now we can work like this. We can still do it like this, you know, still going to work. But we have the other mode, which is a little bit more, more convenient for this because we have this mode and we can create uh, still different variations. We can still do the same thing. The only difference is now that it, we have the piano roll. So we just can do the same thing we've been doing and it's just going to go and just, you know, do it. If I go, go and play it. And again, this works like a step sequencer kind of a mode, which is a little bit different from the usual uh, MIDI mode uh, that we use, or non-pattern mode. All right, pretty, pretty simple. So right here, if we hover, it says enable record or step re record. That's going to be kind of a de deleting all of this. We just don't need it anymore. And uh, what we can do, we just can stand on whatever step where we want to record something. And this is particularly useful if you have a MIDI controller, you know, especially a MIDI controller. So whenever I en enable this, it's just going to go on a kind of a different vibe right there. And remember, we are standing on the number one. So now uh, I'm using an Atom SQ, just if you wanted to know, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, in the case, I'm going to be doing a tambourine. If I play it, it's going to record whatever we did. And then it's going to move to the next step, like, a, you know, a kind of a hardware step, you know, step recorder or, uh, you know, step sequencer. Well, this is pretty much the same vibe. When we uh, play something, it's just going to record it and move on to the next step. And we just can keep doing the same. Now, uh, right here, you have something that it's related to this one. So they, you know, belong to the same thing. So this one is going to be adding a rest. So maybe I just don't want to add something right here. So how can I move on to the next one? So I go right there and just move on to the next one. And on this one, I'm just going to be doing something like that. And I want, I don't want to add something here. I'm just going to move on to the next one and so on. And, you know, kind of a so on and so on. You just, you know, keep moving and you're kind of a, doing that kind of a hardware uh, step sequencer mode. So now if I play it, it's just, you know, kind of a very creative. And if I do the... Right? So it's super cool. Now you can go all the way off on this one. And remember that you can do live record. Maybe this is something I just didn't mention. 
Right? And I'm doing it, you know, with my MIDI, uh, MIDI controller. So you just can loop and record live whenever the F is that you want. So I'm going to get out of the rec mode. I'm going to go right there. I'm going to do nothing. I'm going to go there. I'm going to do nothing. And I'm going to go maybe there and just, you know, I'm going to for now leave it alone. So uh, right now, uh, whenever we uh, do an edit, edit or, you know, record is recording whatever we are doing with the pad or I did with the pad including the velocity. So we have different velocities. So right here at the bottom, we have four different options. The velocity, the repeat, the delay, and the probability. So we're going to talk about this right now. Now, the velocity, it's pretty simple. It's just the velocity of whatever you're doing. So I'm going to kind of delete everything again, and I'm going to be adding different notes. So with the pencil or the, uh, you know, the paint, I can go all the way up, and the velocity of all of them are just going to be, you know, 100%. But if you don't want this, you just can edit the velocity, something like that, and it's super simple and smooth. So that's the velocity. So I'm pretty sure you already kind of knew this. Now, sometimes you want to edit the velocity and you want to maybe edit some other things like the repeat or the delay that we are going to be discussing in a minute. Now, right here, when you uh, do plus, it's going to kind of give you a different window or a second window. And in this case, since we are working with velocity, it's just the same thing. But maybe on this one, I want to kind of work with the repeats. Now, in this case, I'm going to remove it because now I'm going to be stopping this and we are going to be talking about repeats. Now, the repeats, it's some it's pretty simple. I'm maybe going to delete all of this and I'm just going to add the repeat right there and I repeat right there. So since uh, every time we go to a single step, it's going to play at one time, the repeat, what it will do, it will just repeat it multiple times. And this is just, you know, one, one of the things uh, like the uh, resolution we have right here and the steps, something that we use to create, you know, something else, something more creative. So right now we are just playing one thing, sim simple, you know, single thing. And let me go up in velocity. So the repeat right now, it's zero. Now, if I do one, it's going to be playing it twice. And we can about hear that. Now if I go up. Same thing, but it's just going to be a lot more. Now, it depends on the sound that you're using. If it's super short, it's going to be a little bit better or not. Now, you can go all the way up to 10 and it's going to sound like that because, you know, you're just trying to fit 10 on this tiny spot. But you can do a different when you work with different sounds, if they're short or, you know, just different sounds, uh, the, the repetitions are just going to be playing, a, you know, a big part of your variation. And just like that, you know, you can create effects. So yeah, super cool. All right, so that's the repeat. You can go all the way up to 10. I'm gonna be going right there and just gonna be removing everything. Now the delay, uh, the next one is an offset is an offset in time. So I'm going to be doing a snare, just a snare. And I'm going to go there and I'm going to go there. Now, remember that everything that we are doing right here is because we are selecting the lane. So each lane has independent velocity, repeat and delay and probability. So when I go to the snare, the snare is just uh, right there on the delay on 0%. So it means that whenever we play the snare, it's going to be right in the spot. So the delay is going to offset where is going to be playing this? Oh, it's kind of adding a little bit of a humanization, humanized, humanized, you know, feature to this. So if I go all the way up, this one is playing after. Now, if I play, go to zero, it's playing before. So it's uh, kind of a rushing or it's dragging, dragging. Now, right now I'm going to obscene kind of a values. Maybe you want to do just a little bit and just offset. So to get some, you know, a little bit more kind of a natural sounding kit with, you know, whenever you have a little bit more right here, right now, this is kind of too simple. You could even go more and still you're going to notice the difference. So depends on what you want to do, if you want to go crazy or not. Maybe the, the snare, it's something that we really notice, but maybe if we do something like a, maybe not a hat, the tambourine, something like that. Maybe the delay, just kind of offsetting then, it's just going to give us different 
you know, different vibes. And it is. Sounds a little bit different, right? Even the repeats, if I go up in the repeats. It sounds a little, you know, a little bit different. So yeah. That's going to be the delay. And it's very simple to understand. So, okay, I'm going to go there, just delete it. And then I'm going to go to the snare drum. And for now, I'm just going to keep it. So on the tambourines, I'm going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to make sure the velocity is just, you know, the default one. And on the tambourine, we're going to do the probability. Now, this is something kind of a very simple. So if uh, the probability is 100% and we can see it right there, it means that this will pray play for sure. Right now, if uh, we go down in the probability, this is not going to play. But if I go to some in betweens, like 50%, this uh, step might play or not. The tambourine on the step one might might play or, or not. And this is again part of the experimentation and you know the variation that we can create with the with the patterns. So some, if I do 50%, uh, you know when we go and loop this. On each loop, some of them are going to be playing and some of them will not. Because the probability is kind of a 50%-ish. So you get variations of the same thing. And that's the whole, you know, the whole thing. Now, sometimes some things, some some steps, you, you really want them to play. So you go all the way on the 100s and you're going to make sure that they play. And some of them you can go lower because they're less important. And the probability is going to just decide for you. And this mixed with the delay, with the repeat, the velocity, and a couple more things that we can do, including the resolution, it's just going to kind of take you to different, uh, different places, can take you to different places. Okay, so back to nothing on the tambourine. I'm going to be doing this. Right, so when I play it, it's going to sound you know, like a chip. So we have this four, but we can add uh, more modulations in this case. Now we can bring something from impact and modulate it with, you know, the values right here at the, at the bottom. Now it's a little bit weird. Now in this case, what I want to do, since we are working with the tambourine number two, the tambourine number two is going to be this one. So what I want to do when we go through the different steps, I want to modulate the filter with the resonance just to get something else. Now, since I want to use the tambourine and I'm going to be modulating the filter, make sure that this one is on. If it's off, uh, whatever modulation we do right here in a minute it will not work. So for now, I'm just going to do something like this, something like that, and leave it on. And I'm going to close this. Now, remember, the tambourine is number three, so it's going to be one, two, and then three. So uh, this is important because the way you add this is by going to the three dots you have right here. It's going to say add or remove. So this is kind of a, the automation for the pattern. So in the right side, you will have what you can automate. And you have the bank A all the way to the H and some other options like the bypass. Now, in this case, we care about the bank A because that's where we have all the sounds, bank A. So back to the bank A, I'm going to expand this and it's going to ask you, ask us, you know, what do you want to add from the pad one, two or three? Now, remember the tambourine is the pad number three. So I'm going to be expanding this and we have more controls. What do you want to modulate? Now, in this case, I want to modulate the filter and then it's going to be all the way at the bottom so it's going to be filter, envelope amount, cutoff, drive. So you have for the sample, the start, you know, a lot of options. Now in this case, I want to modulate the cutoff. Now as soon as I select this, I need to add it as a param. Now once we do, we do so, we just close it and we can see that now it says filter, then cutoff, and then plus plus. So this is, you know, the cutoff. Now it looks a little bit weird, but trust me, it's not that hard. Now in the right side, this filter cutoff plus plus, is going to be a global control. So if I play it, notice that the cutoff, it's kind of a working, it's kind of a doing it. I'm modulating with, with the mouse. Now if I open this, maybe I can do a little bit of resonance just to get something else out of this. And now we can really hear the sweep. Now I'm gonna for now leave it right there. Now what I would like to do is to run some modulations right here. Now, whenever I do so, I uh, go to the, uh, this is the paint tool and I click on the first one. It's kind of a, kind of a going and doing the same for the other ones. And if I go down, they're following. So this is how it works. 
Now, if I do this on this one, whatever that comes after this is going to follow. Now, if I go to this one and I do this, whatever comes after this one that we enabled is going to follow. Same thing on this one and same thing on this one. So this is kind of a, the way it works. Now, in this case, I'm just going to go all the way up. And if I go all the way up, it's going to enable all of this for all of them. So now we can freely, uh, you know, do this. Now, for now, I'm just going to maybe go back to what we had from before, because maybe what we want to do, we want to freely draw an automation or draw something right here uh, manually. We don't want to, you know, to do one by one and then do with the, with the, with the, with the paint, just in enabling them. So what you can do, it's always, you know, remember, control, uh, shift, or it's going to be alt. In this case, if I do alt and I dr go down on this one right here, it's going to go down on all of them, but at the same time is enabling uh, kind of a step automation for this. So now what I can do is something, you know, something like that, and I'm just going to do my automation. So if I play it, now we can get really cool sound. I'm going to go over there, and we can see it going. Maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to go to zero, because I kind of like that one. A little bit of drive. And now it sounds nothing like a tambourine, but it sounds cool, right? All right, so that's, you know, what you can do by adding uh, different properties or params right here. So if you liked uh, all this and you learned something, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can. Uh, the bottom on the description, you have links for PayPal, you have Google Thanks. And if you want, you can be a one month patron and buy me a coffee. That would be really cool. Now, if you, can, if you can't, that's fine. It doesn't matter. All right, so see you on the next one.